Hey, what's up? My name is Samuel Leeds, and this week I'm going to be answering your property investment questions. I do this every week, and you know what? I really, really enjoy it. I've been investing in property for over a decade, and I've built up quite a large property portfolio. I've also trained thousands of people in property. I've written a best-selling property book, and this week, while I answer property questions, what I want you to do is I want you to ask me your property questions, and next week, I'm going to answer your property investment questions. So let's see what we've got this week. But first, please do me a massive favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn the notification bell on, and get commenting your property investment questions below. Let's see what we've got. Ben Grove. He says, hi Samuel, hope you don't mind me replying to a few of the questions. Of course not, that's what I'm here for. I just turned 19, have a buy to let on a council scheme emergency accommodation. Um, firstly, respect that you're a teenager and you have a buy to let property. That's really massive, so well done. £40,000 raring to go. I intend to use the BRR strategy, but if you want to film a series of Financial Freedom Challenge flipping properties, I'd love to be considered. Have a great day. Oh, Ben, that's amazing. Honestly, um, I don't know if there was a question in there per se, but I'd be very willing to do something. So hit me up on social media. No promises, but I, I just can't wait to do more challenges like that. So good job, hope to meet you in person real soon. Keep up the good work. Benji Fox says, hi Samuel, my question is, what did you do different to everybody else in the industry to become a millionaire whilst others still are not? How did you build up your money? Uh, Benji, that's a really good question. I guess it's the millionaire's question. Um, oh, I became a millionaire I started out investing in property and I wanted to invest. So I bought a property, um, refinanced it the same day, put it in my stepdad's name because I was too young to get a mortgage. And I slowly started using strategies like lease option agreements. I was managing properties to try and get my foot in the door. And that's how I became financially free. How I became a millionaire, believe it or not, was actually through deal sourcing. Because once I'd become financially free building my own property portfolio, I then thought, okay, I wanna buy more houses, but I haven't got money. And one of the ways that I wanted to raise money, I thought, well, if I maybe find some good deals and pass them on to investors, charge a fee, I can use the fee to build my own portfolio. And I became really good at that. And I sold hundreds of property deals, charging minimum of 2,000 pounds, sometimes up to 7,000 pounds. And that is actually how I became a millionaire when I was 25, doing that combined with my own property investments. And then I snowballed my portfolio, refinanced and continued building it. And that's how it happened. I think if you want to be a millionaire, you've got to work ridiculously hard. Um, you've got to invest and you've also got to make money. You've got to be an entrepreneur and you've also got to be an investor together. And when you row the two oars hard, it can happen, but it's not necessarily for everybody. However, I do believe that everybody can become financially free, meaning that they replace their job with a property passive income. And that's really what I'm about teaching. So hope that helps. Great question. What's next? Tyrone Saxton, he says, and I love Tyrone. Tyrone, you're on like every week and it's great to see you doing so many property deals, HMOs and different things. I hope to meet in person one day. Tyrone says, for my four bed HMO that I already have and own in Northampton, respect, I purchased the HMO with planning permission already granted that runs out in March 2021. I have permission for the kitchen to be made bigger and for a fifth bedroom. Do you suggest I go ahead with the extension or put the money towards a deposit for a second house? What's your opinion so that I know what to do? Tyrone Saxton. Tyrone, great question. This all, it all comes down to return on investment. So if you're gonna put a fifth bedroom in the house and you're gonna exercise the planning permission to extend the kitchen, how much additional income is that gonna give you? And it might be that the, the extension, I don't know how much it costs, let's say it's 25,000 pounds, but that's gonna give you a lot of extra income because everyone's gonna like the, like the kitchen and they're gonna pay more rent. You've got a nice fifth bedroom, which is gonna be extra. So it might be a good thing to do. However, my gut feeling would probably be that you'd be better off to put that towards buying another property because then you've got two houses, you've got two lots of rents, you've got two lots of capital appreciations, it probably would be better. I wouldn't freak out about the planning permission because even if it lapses, you're probably gonna be able to renew it anyway. The fact that they gave it you once, it's not like you're asking to do something crazy, but my advice would be do the figures on both and see what's giving you the best return on investment and then make a decision. Good luck. You should document it, vlog it, I'd love to watch. Okay, um, MW2002 Fitness. Hey, good to see that you're into fitness, great stuff. Uh, hey man, do you know when your crash courses are opening again as I still have a ticket from when I purchased one of your books? Great stuff. I'm really itching to, you know what? I love doing YouTube, absolutely love it. 
more than YouTube, I love running training, live training programs. And not being able to do that for these last few months has been weird and I'm itching to get back to it. So I promise, as long as the government allows it, as soon as they allow it, I'm gonna be back to running events again. So I don't know when it will be, maybe September time, we'll see. But I'm itching just as you are. And I'll see you there. Alex Ives, hi Samuel, do you need C3 permissions for rent to SA? No, you do not need um, planning permission or, C th or to change it to C3 unless the council requires it. But normally to run a property service accommodation, you don't need any planning permission. There are exceptions, such as in Greater London, you do. So my suggestion would be to contact the council and ask them the question. And if they don't know, um, and you, what you're gonna say is you're just gonna say, for short stay lets, do you need planning permission? Do I need C3? And if they're not sure, you can always apply to get pre-planning, um, but I doubt you would be, and I doubt, I, they're gonna know. If you're in the council, they're gonna know. So it depends on where you are, but probably not. And to be honest, if you're doing Rent USA, I wouldn't even bother working in an area where you need planning permission to do serviced accommodation because you don't even own it. So but you don't wanna change the planning on a house that you don't even own. I hope that helps. Good job, I look forward to seeing your results. Tommy7773 says, and what happens when house prices drop and tenants can't pay bills due to lack of jobs? That's a pretty pessimistic thing to say. Um, well, firstly, let's hope that that doesn't happen. Well, house prices dropping, If listen, it, I'll address the two points, because you said, and what happens when house prices drop and tenants can't pay bills due to lack of jobs? If house prices drop, it's not really that bad, because if you own a property that's giving you rent, unless the plan is to buy it to sell it, you just continue getting the rent as normal, so it doesn't actually matter if it goes down. Property prices go up, they go down, they go up, they go down, and it doesn't really matter unless you're selling, and then it's a pain, yes. My advice would be to not worry about whether it's gonna go up or down, worry about the cash flow of the property, because the definition of an asset, and your property should be an asset, is something that puts money in your back pocket every month. So if it drops in price for a bit, it doesn't matter as long as you continue to get the rent. Next point though is, what about if tenants can't pay bills due to lack of jobs? I don't think that's gonna happen, and here's why. Due to lack of jobs, if people do, if there is big unemployment and people lose jobs, statistically and historically, actually rents go up. And the reason is, is because if people are struggling financially because of unemployment and um, job, um, lack of jobs, then they haven't got that much money. So instead of buying, because they can't afford to buy, they rent, because you've got to live somewhere. So actually, if there is a lack of jobs, rents will probably go up, especially rents that aren't like luxurious mansions, like HMOs, if you're renting at HMOs, room rents go up a lot in a recession. So I, I, I think that you just need to be probably a little bit more optimistic and make sure you're buying the right kind of properties and not relying on, um, on, on it going up high fast. But in some areas, property prices are gonna rise anyway. So I think it's a whole big discussion. I'd love to chat to you, and I hope you found that answer helpful. Robert Thomas, thank you for doing this. I have two questions in regards to buying a first property. Would you recommend using a bridging loan for a deposit? And as a first time buyer, would a mortgage be easier to attain? I apologize if the questions are dumb. I'm very new to learning about property investing, currently reading your books too. Great stuff. Robert, I'm really glad that you're educating yourself. You're on YouTube, you're reading the books. I'd be really careful about using a bridging loan on your first property, especially if you don't quite understand how it works and you're new to this. Bridging loans are really expensive and they should be to bridge the gap between the purchase and the mortgage. So a bridging loan is something that you're probably only gonna get for like three, six, 12 months max. Um, the only time to get a bridging loan would be if you're buying the property cash and you're gonna use a bridging loan to buy it with the view to refinance it once you've lifted the value of the property. And before you even do that, you wanna to speak to a broker and make sure that you are eligible to refinance the property as well. So I'd probably say keep educating yourself, speak to a mortgage broker, and um, if you've got any more questions, comment them below. Guys, if you're enjoying the video, smash the like button. Also, don't forget, I wanna answer your questions too, so get commenting. If you comment on my videos every single week, that's great. If you've never commented on a video ever before, maybe you should break the trend and comment right now. Dan Greenwood. Samuel, new to your channel, but loving the content. Just bought my first property, under market value. Oh, brilliant stuff, Dan. Um, at 159,000 pounds. 
spent £14,000 on renovations and got help from tradespeople in the family. Five months later, it's now valued at 195. Fantastic, not a huge profit, but given I've no prior experience, I'm happy. Keep up the great content. You've helped inspire me to make this my career going forwards. That's so cool. Dan, honestly, that's amazing. So you bought it for 159, spent 14, which means in total you spent 173. So you bought it for 173, 195. That's good. That's really good. That's like a 22,000. Anyway, my math isn't great right now for some reason, but fantastic job. I'm really, really pleased. If you want any help with it, let me know. Keep commenting, keep me posted on how you're getting on, and that's excellent. Amazing Gamer. Amazing Gamer, you're the guy that always comments first and likes first, so respect. He says, hi Samuel, what would you do if you're a deal sourcer and have found an amazing property lead, but the estate agent tells you to view it, but you can't leave due to this pandemic? Amazing Gamer, I would view it. I, don't, I, I know that some people are really spooked out by Corona still, and they're scared to leave the house. Personally, I mean, if estate agents are open, if you're worried, just social distance, um, you know, wear a mask if you need to, but I would personally just go and view the house because people are viewing houses right now and you don't want to miss the opportunities that are being snapped up. Good luck, let me know how you get on, amazing gamer. Thomas, Thomas says, hi Samuel, thanks for all the free content, keep up the great work, thank you, you too, my friend. I set up a limited company last September and pursued an investor to come on board, currently on my 10th property deal, amazing, which has been largely off the back of your videos. That's really cool, man. Thank you for sharing that. A mixture of buy, refurbish, refinance, and standard buy to let, on average, percentage-wise, how much value will, will adding an extra bedroom to a property create? Firstly, massive, massive respect, well done. 10th property, you know what? The fact that you guys commenting on the channel now are so different to two or three years ago. Two or three years ago, it was all like, oh, what's a BRR and what's a HMO? Now people are saying, I'm on my 10th deal, I'm almost financially free, I've got this third HMO. Like, honestly, um, it's really, really satisfying for me. So I'm, only, I'm even feeling like emotional right now saying this, which is weird for a Q&A Sunday video. I'd forgotten your question on everything. Um, <laughs> good job, man. It's really, really good to see. Okay, on average, percentage-wise, how much value will adding an extra bedroom create? Um, it depends on the um, house. So, okay, <clears throat> depends on the house. Adding an extra bedroom, um, I would probably suggest speaking to an estate agent in the area because if it's a HMO and it's like a four-bed HMO and you want to turn it into a fifth-bed HMO, that's going to add quite a bit of extra value because you're going to increase the rent a lot. Whereas if it is... Um, like a two bed house and you turn it into a three bed house, but there's not much price difference. Maybe go on right move and see the difference between two bed and three beds and speak to estate agents because it really depends on area and stuff. So, uh, but honestly, respect, hope to catch up. Uh, Hazma, hi Sam, can you use money from a remortgage as a deposit on a buy to let mortgage? Yes, you can. If you refinance a house, you can use that money to do whatever you want. And I would suggest that you do use it for that purpose. Uh, okay, one more. Some say Altama. Haha, <laughs> you're right about what you said about me, Samuel. I remember, I made a prediction from your question. You commented for the very first time, I made a prediction on your whole life story, and I was right, there we go, that's really good. Um, yes, I have had a well-paid job, which I hope to give it up to, a concentrated, to concentrate on my property business. I think now I am financially free. Respect for what you teach. That's just awesome. You guys need to apply to come on the YouTube channel where I can interview you. Listen, if you've become financially free, or if you've even got like a great story, honestly, there's nothing that makes me feel better and more fulfilled. And there's nothing I prefer doing, apart from running events, than sitting with people in my house and interviewing them on my YouTube channel on Winners on a Wednesday. So listen, guys, you're clearly killing it. I'm really glad. Go on winnersonawednesday.com, share your story with me, and I'd love to interview you and, and chat with you and inspire more people. Because you know what? Success breeds success, which means my success, as I've shared that with you, has helped you. And then as you share it, will help other people. And I really believe that together we can make the world a better place by educating people about finances. The schools have failed to do it. The schools do, I love, I love the schools, but as far as finances are concerned, they failed. 
They don't teach you about anything about money, anything about property investments or passive income. So they failed to do it. So I believe that we, as a generation, need to start teaching finances, we need to start creating opportunities for people and leveling the playing field. I really believe that. The rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, and unless the people are educated, that's just gonna keep happening more and more and more. So appreciate you watching my videos. Get down to winners on a Wednesday. Continue putting in the work, graft. Take the knowledge and graft. Subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Peace out.